There's been a lot of views of the video I made showing how I modified a Phoenix 2000 for FPV use. And since then I've made additional modifications to the plane, so I'm going to go ahead and post this video. And uh, the main problem I had with the original plane was the motor I used, which was a 2836-1000 kV motor, simply ran too hot and it consumed too much power. I didn't have the endurance I wanted. It was too heavy. So I went to a smaller motor and uh, eliminated the overheating problems through some modifications. Uh, parts, uh, the parts listing of everything I made, uh, all the modifications I have created, will be at the end of this video. Uh, the motor itself that I'm using now is a SK3 2830 1020 kV motor. And it's uh, paired with a carbon fiber folding prop 9.5 by 5 pitch. And uh, the spinner as well. Again, I'll have part numbers of everything. One thing I did to uh, improve the uh, cooling is I put a gap. I machined about four inches off of the spinner, or four millimeters off the spinner to create a gap of around four millimeters between the spinner and the firewall. And additionally, you can see here, I bored some holes in the firewall and hogged out the mounting plate to allow uh, cooling air to go through the motor. Also, you can see that I bored a hole right in the middle of the firewall so that there's clearance around the motor shaft. This particular motor has a fairly short shaft and in order to have enough engagement between the motor shaft and the spinner, I had to put that hole in there to get the spinner right up against the, uh, the motor uh, itself. These modifications solved overheating issues. Maximum temperature on the motor now is 140 degrees even when running full throttle uh, continuously. Just so you know, I used the red plastic spinner and tried testing. Uh, that spinner had no gap between the spinner and the firewall instead of the four millimeter gap that I've obtained. And even with all these holes, no gap. I stopped the, the test at 187 degrees rising. I didn't want to hurt the motor. So the gap is important to cooling the motor. Here's a view of the motor itself for what it's worth. You can barely see it in there, I think. I'm still using a 2200 milliamp hour battery. Also a 2700 milliamp hour battery sometimes used. And at full throttle on the bench with the propellers going full throttle installed, it's 12 amps current flow. I typically run three clicks below full throttle, which is a 9 amp current flow, and it'll still climb. And the thrust of this combination is 60% thrust to weight ratio. The plane weighs 1.58 kilograms ready to fly. So I'm producing 60% of that in thrust. It's not an aerobatic performer. It doesn't climb straight up, but it does climb, and it has a good endurance. Also, another modification. Hopefully you can see this. Easy UHF receiver, diversity receiver. Absolutely no complaints about it. Works great. And you can see that the receiving antennas are exiting the plane at an angle. Good reception. Everything works great. No complaints about the easy UHF system. It does what it says it's supposed to do. Modified the camera mount from last time. Now the pan is still a 180 degree servo, but the tilt is a direct connection to the camera fork. Just a little bit better. Picture is worth a thousand words, so I'll just kind of zoom around. Show you a little bit more of that. Of course, strain relief for the audio-visual cable and the uh, servo cable. Another modification I made was adding, can't quite make sure that you're seeing this, adding a uh, Eagle Tree Guardian three-dimensional 3D, 2D stabilization. Fantastic addition. In essence, 
it really helps increase the stability of this thing. I've got the gain of all three axes turned to maximum and you can see that I uh, have run the wires from the servo or from the receiver to the uh, stabilizer and from the stabilizer to the servos right through a rectangular hole that I put in the wing and the stabilizer is mounted in a flat level uh, portion of the wing that I hogged out of the foam the two wings and then another modification very much worth doing originally I used a full wave dipole antenna this is a half wave dipole again 1.2 gigahertz 400 milliwatt transmitter FM this uh, half wave dipole is superior in all ways to the full wave uh, better range, less weight, less, less drag simply works better and, and thanks to IB Crazy for a good tutorial you can find on the web for building one of these and that's about it this is the combination I'm using right now hopefully this is helpful information if you have any questions feel free to post thanks okay here's the parts list uh, you can see the motor and the Everything else here in the Hobby King part numbers uh, on the right hand column. Um, essentially we've talked about everything. I also added the part number for the 180 degree pan servo which works. Uh, it's not a really great servo. Probably lasts about 15 flights for me so if you're going to order one of those and use it, buy a bunch. <laughs> uh, but the one good thing about that servo is that it's lightweight. Light enough for the Phoenix 2000 to carry it. So that's it. Those are the part numbers. Thanks for your time.